Welcome to this video about the IV characteristics of different circuitry components. We're going to start off by looking at a few key circuitry properties. So we look at potential, potential difference, current, and then finally we'll get on to resistance and look at some graphs of the different components. Okay, so let's start off with potential. Um, so potential is essentially the amount of energy that each unit of charge in your circuit has. Um, so the unit of charge that we use is the coulomb, and uh, the unit of potential difference is then going to end up being a volt. Obviously, the unit of energy is a joule. So we can calculate the potential or the energy in each charge by taking the amount of energy and dividing it by the number of charges that you have. And you'll often see it in the form like this. So E equals QV is the typical formula you see this equation in. Usually that's what it is in a formula sheet, that kind of thing. So in terms of what a coulomb is, it's just a large number of electrons. It's a specific large number of electrons. It's this value here that just tells you how many electrons you have. Because electrons are so small, it's not very convenient to have that unit. So if you get a measurement of potential of 6 volts at a certain point in your circuit, what that means is if you have 1 coulomb of electrons, they will have 6 joules of energy combined together. But what it also means is that each electron has 6 electron volts of energy. Uh, but I'll, you'll look at electron volts in a different topic uh, in the particle physics part of the course. So that's potential. So potential difference is the change in energy between two points. So when you have a voltmeter, you plug it in into two parts of your circuit, and what you do is you measure the difference in the energy of each coulomb has between those two points. So if you measure a potential difference of four volts, that means your coulomb has lost four joules of energy between those two locations you've plugged your voltmeter in. So that's potential, potential difference, and your coulomb. Um, in terms of what that actually looks like in a circuit. So if we start off, we've got our one coulomb sitting over here. The first thing it's going to do is going to go through the battery. So it's starting off with no energy and it's going to go through our battery with EMF of 6 volts. And so if we do that, so it's gone through there and it now has 6 joules of energy or each electron has 6 electron volts of energy at this point. It's got the energy from the chemical energy in the battery or whatever you're using as your power source. Then what's going to go happen is it's going to come around here and start losing energy. So when your coulomb passes through this resistor, what happens is the resistor transfers energy out in the form of heat. So your coulomb loses energy, and in this case it's going to lose 4 joules of energy. We'll look in a later video how you can calculate the amount it will lose. So it's going to lose 4 joules over here, and then through the second resistor it's going to lose its remaining 2 joules of energy there, and end up back at zero again to go back through the battery. So we've got increasing the energy, and then the energy decreases as you go through here back to zero, and it always will end up back at zero by the time it reaches this terminal here, it's always used. Okay, so that's potential potential difference. Uh, so let's have a look at where we might use that, so in, just in case you can't read this. So we've got a light bulb in a circuit with a potential difference of 2 volts, and we want to know how many electrons are transferring their energy if it uses 4 joules of energy every second. So we want to end up with electrons per second. So let's start off with our equation, so E equals QV. We want to calculate charge, so we need to rearrange it to make Q the subject, which is what we've got there. And we've calculated that the charge passing through the light bulb per second will be 2 coulombs. But it wants the number of electrons, so let's do that. So we know 1 coulomb is this many electrons, so 2, col two coulombs even will be twice as many. And we can calculate that and give it to the right number of significant figures and get 1.2 times 10 to the 19 electrons per second there. Okay, so that's how we might use that information. Let's now move on to look at current. So current is essentially a measure of the number of coulombs that pass through a certain point in a second. So it's the total charge divided by the time over which it occurs as more generally. And you will see it in the form Q equals IT when you're given equations. So you look here, essentially what we're looking at is the number of coulombs that pass through each second. So 
Well, you take this point here, it's about one. So it's about half a coulomb has gone through that point in a second, so the current will be 0.5 amps. So that's what current is. So to link that in with what we were talking about before, let's have a look at an example. So we've got a light bulb, this time it receives a current of one amp for five seconds. Calculate the energy used if the potential difference across it is four volts. So if we want to calculate energy, we're going to use this equation here, E equals QV. Um, but we don't currently know what Q is. So the first thing we have to do is work out Q using Q equals IT. And we get Q is five coulombs. Then we can put that and the potential difference into the equation here and get it would use 20 joules of energy to two significant figures there. So that's how we can put the two together. So that's current. Let's have a look at resistance. So a resistance, generally speaking, is how hard it is for a current to pass through a component. That's generally the idea behind it. So if you apply the same potential difference across two components, the one with a higher resistance would have a lower current. Essentially, that's how it works. Now, to be more specific about it, which you need to be with your definitions, resistance is defined as the ratio of the potential difference across a component and the current going through that component. That's the precise definition that you need to know. You can often see that in equation form, so we've got potential difference over the current, and you'll often see it in the form V equals IR, which is called Ohm's law, after Georg Ohm, a famous uh, physicist. So lots of physicists get units named after them. This is his law. He also has the unit of resistance as well, the Ohm. So that's generally speaking what resistance is. Now we're going to be interested in determining resistance from an IV characteristic. What that means is you've got a graph with I on the y-axis and V on the x-axis. It's called an IV characteristic. So taking this equation we had before, V equals IR, we want it in Y equals MX plus C form. Whenever we have a graph and an equation, we want them to be mapping the same thing. So if we rearrange it slightly to leave I by itself, we get I is equal to 1 over R times V. So we know the gradient of this graph, the M, is going to be 1 over R. So the gradient here is 1 over R. What that means is a steeper or a larger gradient is indicating a lower resistance on these graphs. So if you see a gradient which is steeper, so something like this, that would mean the resistance was lower, which is a useful thing to have a look at. So that's generally what resistance is. So what we're going to take a look at now is a few characteristic graphs of different components. So if we plot a graph of something we don't know, we can work out what it is. So let's start with an ohmic conductor. Uh, so this is the graph we were looking at before. So an ohmic conductor is one in which the current and the potential difference are directly proportional to each other. And what that means is the graph of them is a straight line, so a constant gradient, and it passes through the origin. That's the part a lot of people will forget. Straight line and going through the origin, that makes a directly proportional relationship. That's an ohmic conductor. A filament bulb is slightly different. If you can see in the central section, it's very much like an ohmic conductor, but the key features of filament bulbs are these two sections at the top. And that's due to the fact the resistance of the component will increase if it gets hot. It means the particles in the, whatever the object is, uh, get more in the way of the electrons as a way of thinking about it if they're hotter and have more energy. So if the resistance increases, that means the gradient of the line decreases, because remember they were inversely proportional to each other. So you can see here, the gradient is decreasing, which means the resistance is increasing at those points because it's getting hot. And we get the same in the negative direction as well here, but in the central section, it's very much like an ohmic conductor. So that's a filament bulb. Do not mix that up with things like fluorescent bulbs, LEDs, those kind of things. This is a filament type bulb. And the last one we're going to take a look at is a diode. Um, so a diode can be in two different states. It can be forward bias or reverse bias. So forward bias means you're in this section of the graph, the positive x direction. Reverse bias means you're in the negative side here. So if you're forward bias, which is this section here, you can see that the, it's a straight line, or it's going straight up, which means the resistance is nearly zero, and we usually say it is zero for modeling purposes. And then when it's reverse bias, you can see here, it doesn't matter what the potential difference is, 
the current is still zero, so we can see it's an infinite resistance at that point, so that's what it says here. Now, a part that you don't really need to know about is this one. This is actually where your diode has broken down and started acting like a conductor again, but don't worry about that too much, but if you're interested, do look that up, it's quite interesting. Um, but it's this section of the graph that we're most interested in, and the transition point here is called the activation potential. Uh, very commonly with a circuit one, it's about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, but it does vary somewhat from component to component there. So that's your diode and the last component we're going to take a look at today. So just to finish off, uh, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see the other content that I've made, including like past exam solutions, that kind of thing. Um, if you notice anything wrong or you notice the video I haven't made yet, please do comment and say about that. And then finally, um, those of you who aren't my students, if you want to access the lesson resources that go with these videos, you can uh, buy them at this link here. Um, do take a look at that and thank you very much for watching.